What do you think would happen if you cut the neurofibers connecting your left brain hemisphere to the right hemisphere? Would you become a dead person or become two persons? Let's look at one of the most interesting brain experiments to figure that out. Back in the 1950s, some brave scientists performed a groundbreaking surgical procedure on cats and monkeys by cutting the dense highway of fibers called corpus callosum that connects the two brain hemispheres. To their surprise, the animals seemed to be doing just fine. So some years later, they attempted the same procedure on human patients who miserably suffered from epilepsy. These patients had seizures that started in one hemisphere and spread to the other, causing untamable complete body seizures that were making their lives really difficult. The outcomes were remarkable. By disconnecting the two hemispheres, the doctors effectively put an end to the seizures. But it immediately became obvious that something strange was going on. The patients who underwent split brain surgery seemed to possess two distinct brains with contrasting personalities and abilities inside a single skull. There were even cases where one hand would reach out to something while the other hand was trying to hold it back. Baffled researchers had to look more closely into this by cleverly devising an experiment so that they could interact with each hemisphere independently. The neural wiring of the body to the brain hemispheres is a cross-connection. So the right hemisphere controls the left side of the body while the left hemisphere controls the right side. That means if you could interact with the right hemisphere only, the left side of the body would answer and only interact with the left hemisphere, then the right side of the body would answer. But the language processing is predominantly processed in the left hemisphere, so only the left hemisphere could answer by talking, while the right hemisphere could only react by reaching out to things, pointing at them, or drawing, but not by talking, the so-called silent hemisphere. So the researchers came up with a clever setup. They had the patients focus on the point at the center of the monitor, and some images were shown briefly on either side of the screen. If they were asked verbally what they had seen, they would only verbalize whatever the left hemisphere had seen. But if they were asked to describe it with their left hand, which is controlled by the right hemisphere, then they would only sketch and write whatever the right hemisphere had seen. What did you see? I saw a hammer. So just close your eyes and draw with your left hand. It's nice. What's that? Saw. Yeah. What did you see? Hammer. What'd you draw that for? I don't know. Notice how the patient drew a saw even though he verbally stated he saw a hammer. But when asked why, he just says, I don't know. But just remember, it is the left brain that is talking and it is confused. But this hasn't always been the case. For example, in another fascinating experiment in 1978, the patient's left hemisphere was shown a chicken claw, while the right hemisphere was exposed to a snowy winter scene. The patient was then asked to point at the cards that represented what he had seen. His right hand pointed to a chicken, which makes sense. His other hand pointed to a card with a snow shovel, which also makes sense. But then he was asked verbally to explain his choices. Remember, it is the left hemisphere that talks, and the patient's left hemisphere only has information about the chicken claw, but not the snowy winter. Naturally, you would expect the patient to be confused, and just like the other patient, to say, I don't know why I chose the shovel. But that is not what happens. Instead, they witnessed an amazing feature of the left brain. To fabricate stories right on the spot, the patient, without hesitation, said, Oh, that's simple. The chicken claw goes with the chicken, and you need a shovel to clean out the chicken shed. You may be able to imagine the right hemisphere silently screaming, That's not why I picked the shovel. It was because of the snow picture. But unfortunately, it cannot scream because language is being controlled by the left brain. These experiments demonstrate that when one part of the brain makes a choice, other parts can quickly invent a story to explain why. If you show the command walk to the right hemisphere, the patient will get up and start walking. If you stop him and ask why he's leaving his left hemisphere, cooking up an answer will say something like, I was going to get a drink of water. These findings all suggest that the interpretive mechanism of the left hemisphere is always hard at work, seeking the meaning of events. It is constantly looking for order and reason, even when there is none which leads it continually to make mistakes. The debate goes on whether these patients have two minds in one body, two brains in one mind, or even two conscious agents in one brain. But how does this connect to us, to people with an intact brain? We certainly don't feel like we have two minds, right? One perspective is this. The human brain is not a homogeneous agent, but instead has a modular structure, meaning it has multiple agents, which sometimes work as a team of rivals. 
There is even a theory that the conflicting brain agents lead to the evolution of ego consciousness, which works more or less as a moderator between these independent agents. Another perspective is to think of the brain or mind as non-quantitative. For example, if you mix two bodies of water, you still have one body of water, which is just larger. Similarly, if you combine two minds, you still get one mind, which is just larger in size. Take this further, if several brains are interconnected well enough, they stop working as independent brains, but work as a single mind, hence the collective mind. How do you think these findings relate to our own perception of self? Are we a single conscious agent, or are we just part of a larger mind, just like the cells of a body? Let me know what you think in the comments. In the following videos, I will dive into one of the most amazing books about our brains and take a look at more examples to show how far our brains can go in deceiving us and manipulating our perception of reality. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.